Today we've got an interesting watch for you. It's the uh, Mont Blanc Time Walker Urban Chronograph. First off, I just want to say thanks to all of the people who have subscribed to my tiny little channel. I've just grown over 200 and uh, wasn't sure I'd ever get there. So thanks a lot and uh, I look forward to reading more of your comments and stuff. This watch was a bit of an impulse buy. I just happened to see it for a good price on a, uh, in a watch auction group that I belong to. And um, I thought it was just interesting and different. A shout out to Blake McNeese for um, selling me this beauty. Well, the first thing that caught my eye about this watch was the red ring around the crystal. I'm not really sure how they did that, but it's, uh, it's nice. It's not quite as dramatic in person as um, I thought it was, you know, from the pictures, but it, it's a nice little detail and it kind of invites you to look closer into the watch. And the red matches the big second hand and um, also the hands on the, the two subdials, the hour and the, and the minutes. The second thing was the Mont Blanc star, the sort of snow-covered peak logo thing that they have on the sign crown. I, I've long been a, a fan of, of Mont Blanc. I've got uh, 149, nice big fat fountain pen. I've had that for years. I absolutely love writing with it. And uh, my wife got me the uh, Star Walker. Yeah, Star Walker. I, I keep thinking of Luke, but uh, yeah, it's not Luke. It's Star Walker. Anyway, uh, I love Mont Blanc. You know, I have for years. And so I just really couldn't pass up a chance to get a, a watch and see what that was about. Third thing that I thought was interesting was the, the fancy lugs um, with all the details and stuff. And then they have, you know, the star logo in them also. Just a uh, really interesting detail on that. I was also interested in the, the bowl-shaped case. It's just very unusual. It kind of reminds me of a Chinese wok, though, for like stir-frying your vegetables. But... It's just unusual and different, and I, I like unusual and different, as long as unusual and different is well done. And then, of course, there's the, uh, the domed sapphire crystal and the really large, extremely readable dial on this thing. Mont Blanc Pens Company started in about uh, 1906 as the, uh, the Simplo Filler Pen Company. Made pens for everybody. Um, then about 1913 they adopted their star logo and changed the name to the Mont Blanc Company after the snow-covered peak. They weren't really a luxury only company until about 1977 when Dunhill uh, acquired them. They dropped all of their affordable lines and went luxury only. Mont Blanc is a relative newcomer to the world of watches, and that makes sense now that they are part of the Reachmont Group, which owns uh, IWSC, JLC, VC, and Baum and Mercier. Their first watch was announced in 1997. Lots of folks think that they are a brand to watch. And in 2007, they went all in buying Minerva. Now they can make their own premium in-house movements. Boy, do they look good. Yikes. This guy is powered by the MB25-07, which is actually a Salita SW500, which is pretty much the same as an ETA2892. That's a step up from the ETA2824 that you find everywhere these days. It's a handsome movement to look at through the Sapphire display back. Mine runs good within about four to six seconds a day. You will see this movement in Zinn and Oris chronograph models, and you might actually see them in other non-chronograph watches where they wanted a sub-second subdial. 
This chronograph starts, stops, and resets. You can measure elapsed time up to 12 hours, and there is a 30 minutes dial, which is actually pretty cool because the uh, hand jumps each minute. At 43 millimeters, this is the upper limit of what I feel fits on my 7.5 inch wrist. At 105 grams, it doesn't sound like it would be too heavy, but the band weighs nothing, so all the weight is in the head of the watch, which makes it rather top-heavy. It flops around a bit on my wrist. I actually love the way the dial looks in the dark, even though the loom isn't particularly strong or long-lasting. Have a look at my time-lapse video if you're interested in loom performance of this guy. The strap is leather and very supple feels and smells good, and came feeling like it was already broke in. No complaints there. It has taken me a long time to make this video because I have struggled trying to figure out how I actually feel about this watch. On one hand, it is pretty gorgeous with a wide open dial, a sapphire crystal that reminds me of the front of a camera lens, and its dressy kind of urban style. Hmm, perhaps well named in that respect, I think. But the engineer in me thinks it's a tool watch, since it has that cracking good chronograph, but it has too many frills to be really be a tool watch. And at nearly 15 millimeters tall, it seems too tall and top heavy to be really dressy. I bet this would be an amazing watch if it were, say, hmm, 40 millimeters across and 13 millimeters tall. Well, there you go. What do you guys think about this thing? Is it a keeper or should I sell it off?